everyone. Thanks for joining me. I always appreciate your time. It has been about a year's long journey since I started studying my ancestral tongue, the Igbo language of Southeast Nigeria. Of course, it's interesting that I've been studying African history all my life, but really intensively about 11 years. And I had always suspected that I was Igbo on some side of my family. Uh, because, of course, our ancestry traces back to Virginia, and then 40% of all African Americans uh, that were enslaved in Virginia came from the Igbo tribe specifically. Uh, so, obviously, it was always a real high chance that I was Igbo anyway from that origin in that state of Virginia. Uh, but the DNA test that came back a couple years ago actually confirmed that uh, my suspicions were true. Uh, but nonetheless, I uh, ever since have been studying Igbo culture, traditions, and language. And I'm about a year into uh, studying the language. So I do still believe that I'm very, very much green, as we like to say, meaning that very, very new to the language. But uh, I'm going to make a couple videos today of some of my studies. I have a book called Igbo 101. And I've been using it. And as I finish a certain section of it, I go and test myself via... Um, making a video. Uh, and I appreciate you that are native speakers correcting me and helping me and all across the seas that have been my tutors along the way. So we're just going to be very brief. I'm going to make this one of two videos going to shoot today in practicing the language. Of course, you can't just academically do it and without saying it in order to remember it. So that's why I bring myself to accountability in making these videos. And of course, again, I'm a student and I thank you for uh, joining me uh, accordingly. All right, the first word of 14 words, so it's gonna go pretty quickly on this video. Uh, and this is in relation to animals. Now, this is in relation to action verbs or, or the things that animals do uh, that I found in my book. Uh, so the first thing, of course, an animal always wants to do is to eat. So to say eat in Igbo would be eerie to eat, eerie, to eat. And again, remember, I'm not using the uh, actual pronunciation of the letters in Igbo. I'm just going to keep it in English just to make it simple. But uh, when you're pronouncing the I's, it's always sound like an E in um, uh, Igbo. That's why I'm saying eerie for eat, eerie to eat. Okay, to bark. I have a little 11-year-old uh, dog and a papillon, and he loves to bark at everything. A lot of times, the smallest dogs think they're bigger than what they really are. And, of course, he's that way, especially when somebody comes to the uh, door. It's very difficult to calm him down. He loves to bark. All right, so to say bark uh, in Igbo, you would say, say Iba Oja, to bark. Iba Oja, to bark. Now, again, that U with a dot underneath, we call that a diacritic in Igbo. That's like an O sound. Okay, so it's Iba Oja to bark. Again, Iba Oja to bark. To chase is Icho to chase. Icho to chase. That does happen around my house. I have a dog and a cat and they chase each other. Uh, it's Icho to chase. Icho to chase. To feed. Enye to feed. Excuse me, I said it incorrectly. Actually, to feed is inye to feed. Inye to feed. Okay. To hibernate, there's two words for it, and I separated them to keep down confusion. Uh, to hibernate like a bear does in the winter. He sleeps all those months, whatever it may be, several weeks, and comes out back to life, basically. Uh, to hibernate is inayari to hibernate. Inayari to hibernate. Now, remember again that GH basically is an actual one letter, one sound. And it sounds like a Y to me. So that's why you hear me saying it that way. So it's Inayari to hibernate. Inayari to hibernate. Okay, also hibernate can be said a different way, another word. Inapu 
to hibernate. Inapu to hibernate. And of course, that KP is actually one letter in Igbo as well. And um, for my English tongue, I really can't pronounce it correctly. And most of my friends over in Nigeria say just pronounce it as a P. So technically, I'm not pronouncing it the native way, but it's really the only way I can get it out. Uh, to hibernate then is Inapu to hibernate. Inapu to hibernate. Okay, to hunt is Ichonta to hunt. Ichonta to hunt. One of the most interesting words I learned a long time ago is how you pronounce businessman. It's basically Ichonta ego. The only difference is, is in this case is that ego means money. So really, if you're a businessman uh, in the Igbo language, you're literally saying a hunter of money. But in this case, of course, we're only talking about uh, animals, so it's ichonta when an animal hunts. Ichonta to hunt. To move. Of course, animals get hyper and they move around a lot, and so it would be inayari to move. Inayari to move. To perch, basically when uh, the bird stands on a branch, it's perching. So to perch is ibe quasi to perch, ibe quasi to perch. Again, ibe quasi to perch. To pray, another way of saying hunting, but uh, there's another word for it when it's actually a prey. It's icho yari. To pray. Icho yari to pray. Again, Icho yari to pray. All right, one of the most beautiful things that you can ever see is a horse run, just graceful and powerful at the same time. Uh, so, in order to say uh, uh, to run uh, any animal, indeed, you have to actually do what's again called vowel dropping. So the A in the word, you don't pronounce it, and you run the two words together, just like we do with uh, contractions in English. In English, we often don't say do not, we say don't. And so it's the same thing in Igbo. It's kind of like contracting two words into one. And when you do that, you drop some letters. And in this case, you drop the A. So you would say to run, Ibasa, to run, Ibasa. To run again, ibasa to run to swim would be pronounced igwo imuri. Igwo imuri. I said it incorrectly the first time, so let me say it again. Igwo imuri to swim, and of course, the literal definitions of the words is this it's igwo which means to swim, and miri means water. To swim in water means to swim in short English. So that's what you see the little peng penguin doing on the screen. So it's igwu miri to swim. Again, igwu miri to swim. All right, dogs love to wag their tail. So to say wag, it would be ife yari to wag. Ife yari to wag. Again, ife yari to wag. Last one, and the video will be concluded. To walk. We like to walk our dogs, so we want to got to know how to describe that in Igbo. It would be iga yari to walk. Iga yari to walk. But again, God bless you. Thank you, especially those that have been on this year-long journey so far in learning the language. I believe I have many more years to go, but thank you for your support, and especially those are native speakers that have been tutoring me along the way. Your constructive criticism and your help and support are appreciated. Uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.